Before we get started, let me get something clear. I am an artist. Just because I dabble in stable diffusion doesn't mean that I think drawing some unachievable skill or something. Like look, I can draw. Maybe not the best artist out there, but everybody's on their own artistic journey. Can we stop pausing the video at 0 seconds and leaving angry comments about how I hate artists or something? Who am I kidding? Those people have already left. AI art. It's cool. Being able to generate anime girls or boys haphazardly is just one of the great perks of being alive right before the AI revolution. But there's so many ways to generate AI images, and there's so little time in the day to see if each one's actually decent enough to devote your time to. If only there was some loser who's been keeping track of this stuff for years. Oh wait, that's me. Yeah, I'm gonna go over each AI anime art service I've used. If I've missed any, tell me, because I would like to see and try it out. The child inside me wants to list nothing below C tier, but I have to be honest, with some of the services, they aren't really that great at making anime characters. It doesn't mean that they're bad services per se, it's just that they're not great at making anime girls. There's quite a bit in here, and that kind of helps highlight the fact how amazing the Novel AI's model of Stable Diffusion was when it came out months ago. I'm going to group these services together, as for my reasons of why they're so low, applies to all these services almost equally. So in D tier we have Starry AI, Night Cafe, Dream by Wumbo AI, and Neural Love. They are all AI art generation services that aren't great at creating anime girls, and they're also all extremely slow, some of them faster than others. For example, here's my attempts to recreate this character and these AI modules. She is an overall simple character when broken down to a prompt, being a gloomy white hair anime girl with grey eyes. She has a tired expression and bags under her eyes. She's wearing a black robe. Yeah, not the best art ever. I mean there's some aspects that I really like about these images. And it's possible to get decent art out of these services, but it can't really compete in the same world as the top tiers and the art of creating anime girls. Most of the D tiers also run on a token system that isn't really worth the money that you put into it, but really, what token system is actually worth it? If you had asked me before October 2022, the D tiers would easily be B tiers. That's how crazy their recent improvements have been. Next we have the C tier, or what was the old A tier. These services are specialized in creating anime girls, so the results are much, much better than the D tiers. They're also more limited in scope compared to D tier. You won't be getting a landscape out of these services, but you will get a damn decent anime girl. So from now on, we're going to be more specific with the pros and cons here, and really focus on the service. First off in C tier, we have This Anime Does Not Exist, the new and upgraded form of the original AI waifu art generation service back in 2018. This waifu does not exist. It's an older module of image generation, running off a custom trade version of StyleGAN 2, which means that it's also two years behind on AI innovation. However, the custom training works wonders, as it's able to create some decent anime characters. There is a lot of classic AI jank with these images, you know, eldritch limbs, warped body, but that's part of the charm of the early days of AI art. As for negatives, however, we have to go over how unfriendly this anime does not exist is at trying to get specific things generated. It uses the normal does not exist random grid layout to show generate images, making everything up to chance. You might find art that you like, you might find eldritch abominations, it's not really a service you go into hoping to find your waifu or construct an OC. More of a gallery of what AI art can do. An outdated gallery at that. The control that you are given however is quite vague, being the dreaded creativity slider. What does it mean? What does it do? Who knows? It can cause mitosis. Make a flat girl with a scarf grow huge boobs. It can cause mitosis. On the bright side, selecting an image on the grid will give you a ton of creativity slider versions of the image so you aren't really missing out too much due to the vague system. Overall, it's a great module if you don't really have anything specific in mind and don't mind dredging through classic AI body horror. There is jank, but overall being specifically trained for anime art makes really good anime AI art. Who knew? Next we have the gateway drug that sucked me into all of this, Waifu Labs. Actually this is Waifu Labs V2, which was introduced at the beginning of 2022. So it's like almost a year behind in innovations. The guys at CJG already made a really good video describing how the AI works. It's really nice, it breaks it down to simple ideas. You should really check it out. Basically, Waifu Labs uses its own Gantt system specifically trained for anime characters like this anime does not exist. However, it goes the extra mile by breaking down parts of the image into DNA-like features called latents. These latents can be modified to change the color, detail, and pose of the image, allowing for some much needed control in the image generation process and allows characters to become closer to a desired outcome. There's just so much good about Waifu Labs that places it above all the previous services. Even this anime doesn't exist. It creates legitimately good anime characters, 
gives you some control of that generation and it's fast. Waifu Labs is incredibly fast, going at what I like to call the speed of thought, near instant generation. And I cannot stress how nice it is to have anime art go at the speed of thought. Massive plus points on that, making it a league of its own compared to everything else. S tier if this was months ago. B tier, the B tiers were on a league above a league of its own. Waifu Labs is a perfect blend of price, quality, accessibility. There's just some things to be desired in the control department, but that's mostly from the model being old and custom. Now it's time for B tier, which I will stress, the gap between B tier and everything else is huge. Stable Diffusion is just that good. So the lone member of B tier is PixAI, a powerful free service that's running off a modified version of Novel AI Stable Diffusion called Anything V3. And I better not see anyone claiming Novel AI Stable Diffusion is theft using this free software because it's using the same stolen training images that you cry out against. So it does run on a token system like many of the D tier services, but at least PixAI credits feel a lot better than the other ones. You can always generate images, it's just that it might take a day, a week, a couple of minutes. It might as well not be able to generate images for free. You can also just spend 1k credits to priority gen an image, which will take a few minutes. This is unfortunately why PixAI is B tier instead of A tier. I completely understand why it takes so long to generate an image with the service and the limitations and everything. However, to be able to compete with the best, it needs to be as fast as the best. PixAI is not bad at all. In fact, for many people, it is legitimately better than both A tiers. It's a free stable diffusion service, you know, the quality AI art generation. It uses the currently agreed upon best stable diffusion model for creating anime images. It gives the user perfect control over their images. In fact, it's even more controlled than some of the other A tier options. But the problem is the speed. The fact that it takes minutes to generate an image that could possibly just be a mulligan image that doesn't even look great that you just delete afterwards with a ton of AI artifacting it's what keeps it away from being a top tier. Also, it's in B tier because of the dev behind it. Tom Yum emailed me to check it out, but then ghosted me after I asked questions about the AI. Which I may point out, he encouraged in the email. Yeah, Tom Yum, I'm calling you out. That being said, PixAI is not just an image generation service. It's also kind of an anime stable diffusion gallery where you can get inspirations and learn about tags and all that, so that's cool. Also, there's this daily gacha thing where you can generate a random waifu and get its tags, which is nice for inspiration, but I have to ask, how, how is this generation instant? Is it like a prefab resulting and we're not generating images on the fly? Or can the whole service be like this? Because if PixAI could generate images this fast, it would literally be the best AI art service out there. But yeah, basically it's perfect for trying out anime stable diffusion as you don't really have to spend money on it. Okay, future me here since PixAI has evolved quite a bit and I have a ton more experience with it now since image gen is now at reasonable speeds. The service is basically perfect, but there's just some quality of life that's needed. The UI in general is just kind of annoying, with the resolution and negative prompts being hidden behind a dropdown. Also, I don't really like auto publish being on by default. I don't really want to flood my images onto the website, although this is a very minor gripe and doesn't really matter too much. What really annoys me is that tags aren't saved between images, making the whole process whenever you're trying to experiment on the website very, very annoying, as you have to manually add all the positive tags and negative tags and resolution every single time. Basically, I don't like the UI of the image gen, but good service. PixAI, A tier now. Okay, emergency news section midway through the video. Holora AI. Or, I think it's supposed to be Holora. It's kind of like Hollow from Spice and Wolf. Anyways, as of recording this, Holora AI literally just came out an hour ago. So I'm really not well versed in it. It has some connections to this anime does not exist since it was directly linked to it as if it was a new version. But I'm not 100% sure how it's linked to it. The free service of it is really really not great allowing you to generate images with tokens okay cool pretty standard but wait that would be way too nice so instead you can only randomly generate images like literal zero control on what you get you'll get something and you'll like it for all intents and purposes the free service does not exist the paid plans for it does seem pretty good on paper but i'm not really a big fan of being locked into a token system after paying for a service not to mention that its value is way worse than its competition the a tier what it does have going for it is that it's really fast though, sometimes reaching the speed of thought, although when it's not that fast, it's fast enough that it doesn't even really matter that it's not instant. It uses a model called Akashi Anime. I am not too familiar with this AI module, it's based on Stable Diffusion 1.5 and seems to be more powerful than Novel AI. The prompt waiting on it is way more intuitive in Akashi when compared to its Novel AI based competitors, as it uses pluses and minuses rather than the mess of brackets. However, I have not experimented with enough to actually know how things work because I don't have $25 to throw around at every new service. I really want to like Holara, but I just really can't. The free version is miserable. The paid one's a worse deal than its competition. 5.5k images a month is nothing if you're as prolific as I am. 
Maybe for more casual users that want the quality of this module, it might be worth it. But I really can't see myself using this service. If it was unlimited generations in the $25 tier, even in some restricted way, I would give it an A tier. However, knowing that $25 wouldn't even last me a month, and it also locks some of the generated points that I paid for behind a daily drip feed, just really puts it down here. Now for the A tier, the best of the best as of now, the sci-fi dream, and a large step forward to the end of the human race selling us out to the AI hive mind. First off, we have the best or worst option, the high variable option that gives you B tier or S tier depending on your PC, using your own computer. Honestly, if you have a good computer with modern PC parts, this is your go-to. Decently fast, you're in control of your images and generations. Cheaper than any other services and unlimited generations. You can use whatever module you like and so much more and it's just perfect. However, that is assuming you have a good computer. Most people do not have a good computer. So a single image might take a couple of seconds to a couple of tens of minutes. And if you have an AMD graphics card, well, you're out of luck because you can't even do stable diffusion. It is either the best option, an okay option, or not even an option. It all depends on your machine. I have a garbage old computer from like 5 years ago that has been constantly failing for the past few months. So safe to say for me, it's not the best option. Also you have to do this on your computer. You don't get the luxury of doing stable diffusion on the toilet or in your bed on your phone with your own local machine doing stable diffusion. Maybe with some desktop streaming to phone, you can get it to work, but it's not seamless like everything else. And finally, the king for now until Tomya makes Pix AI faster somehow, or somebody else innovates and creates something completely new, Novel AI. So why is Novel AI at the top right now? Well, it's because it's consistent and works on all devices, be it bad computers, really bad phones, or half-dead laptops. And it's fast. Image generation runs at the speed of thought, and it has a normal perks of stable diffusion. The main problem? The cost. Novel AI is expensive. Well, expensive for unlimited generations. And trust me, you're gonna want unlimited generations when it's at the speed of thought. Not to mention, Novel AI comes with some nice quality of life functions like saved images having prompts stored in the metadata, which I may add is one of the best quality of life features ever, as it allows for recreations of characters or ideas without having the prompts stored somewhere, separate or out of the way. There's nothing more frustrating trying to recreate some idea or concept or effect, and nobody remembering what prompts were used to cause it. Projects like the boys would never happen if it weren't for metadata tag storage. Overall, Novel AI is carried by its quality of life features being fast and consistent. However, it falters in its price and the fact that some might prefer anything V3 over the module that's being used. Great if you don't have a good PC, but have $25 monthly to spend. 